Welcome back everybody. Today we're talking about the real reason you are not landing your uppercuts as much as you want. I was away this weekend for seminars, did a bunch of privates, and the number one question in terms of hands was why can I not land my body hook? But I already have that video up there, you can check it out. And then number two, why can I not land my uppercut? We're gonna break down today all the potential reasons that this super dangerous punch is not landing for you. So keep in mind, very often when you have things that are not working in a specific technique, it's small adjustments that need to be made. It's not something massive like, oh, you're way too slow when you throw it and you need to speed it up or your technique is terrible and that's the reason it's not working. No, if you're not a beginner, and you've moved on to intermediate or advanced stage, there's a good chance you are able to execute that uppercut and after watching this video, it's gonna start working for you. So let's just start diving into all these super important points. The first one for me is understanding uppercut range and being a little bit open to diversity in that range. So a lot of people think because whenever somebody holds for you in an uppercut, it's this straight up motion and we're kind of coming at this angle. That's the way we throw it, it's right there. And that's the only way that they try and throw it when they spar. So they'll do something like jab and then go to throw the uppercut and go, oh shoot, it's not landing. And a lot of times that's because your opponent is in this upwards position. They're not leaning forward the same way as somebody holds a pad for you. But if you're able to make adjustments in one of two ways, either I throw my jab and I come long with my uppercut, or when I come in for my jab, I jam it a little bit, I land here, so now my uppercut is at that ideal range which I'm used to. Both of those are very good solutions to being able to start landing that uppercut. It's not always here. It can be tighter if necessary. It can also be longer if necessary. I can let that uppercut come from further away. Play around with that length. As a pad holder, you should not always be holding for your uppercuts right here. You can turn the angle. So I could have the guy come from here to here. So he has to throw longer and hopefully he'll recognize before he lets that punch go that he needs to make that adjustment. If you're shadow boxing, again, not always tight, tight, tight. Sometimes jab, long uppercut, jab, cross, long uppercut, close back, angle to the side, tight uppercut, tight uppercut. They back up, long uppercut. You play around with that difference and it's going to help you. And please remember that when you're throwing that long uppercut, rotation is super important. I can't just stay square. Maybe I can do that in this regular uppercut, but when I want to go far, I have to rotate far so this shoulder gets that max distance, which will help me reach further. The next point I want to bring up and why it might not be landing for you the way you want is you're not waiting for the right moment. You are pre-planning the uppercut and you're going, oh, okay, I'm going to step forward and I'm going to throw a jab, cross, uppercut, and then I'm going to land the hook but it doesn't work like that. You need to wait for the right moments. Now that could be somebody shelling up really tight. They're like this and you decide, okay, I've worked my way in and now I'm gonna let a series of uppercuts go. Or maybe you tag them with a body shot and when you tag them with the body shot, they go, oh, and they pull their body back to stay, to stay safe. Now it's that prime position where you can lift somebody very easy with that uppercut, which is the way you normally throw it, straight down to up. So make sure you wait for the right moment or at least set it up in the right way. It could come body shot to uppercut or body shot to uppercut or I go jab cross long uppercut as opposed to just I'm gonna throw it and shoot, why is it not landing? Well, it's because there was no setup. The next reason the uppercut might not be landing for you is because you're not throwing it as much. Why are you not throwing it as much? Well, usually people throw less when they're scared. Why might you be more scared about letting uppercuts go? Well, you're more open. That's just the nature of an uppercut. For a straight punch, let's say a cross, I can come right from my head right to the target. I can use my shoulder to protect myself. It's a fairly safe motion. For an uppercut, I've got to either bend my knees and lift out, or I've got to throw my jab. I have to drop my hand a little bit and then execute. I have to make sure that as I do this, 
I feel confident and safe in exposing myself, I might do that by slipping my head off the center line. I drop my hand a little bit as I do that, and then I lift into it. I might do this by really protecting myself with my lead shoulder. Instead of throwing my uppercut and having my shoulder down here, I might tuck that shoulder up and drop my chin. So I feel really protected on this entire side instead of going one, two, three, and landing like this. Keep yourself safe. When you're safe and you're confident in your shot, you're gonna start letting it go more and then you'll land it more. Now I've talked on the channel before about something I pretty much just mentioned, which is breaking rules. When you teach somebody the basics, you go, let's say jab cross, hands tight to the cheeks. One, back to the cheek, two, back to the cheek. But then you see guys like Manny Pacquiao who bounce around and they'll come one and two and they'll move out. Why can they get away with this? Well, they understand the dangers of what they're doing, but they also know their strengths outweigh the dangers of whatever they are executing. Same thing with the uppercut, like I just mentioned, when you throw, it's very difficult not to drop your hand a little bit. So you need to recognize that as I go to throw the uppercut, maybe I jab, I pull back a little lower, but this is open. And when it's open, I'm exposed. So I have to be aware that anything that comes to this side as I throw is gonna land. If I understand that, then if for some reason somebody starts throwing, I can bail out. I can be like, okay, I'm jabbing, bail, jab, bail, jab, oh, he's not doing anything, now I throw it. So just be aware that it is okay to break the rules of this technique. It doesn't need to be one, two, and it's perfect. It can just be one, two, and drop. When you watch Canelo slow motion when he uppercuts a lot of times, maybe off his body hook, it's one, pull back, two. And you're going, how does he get away with that? Well, he recognizes the dangers and he breaks the actual rules that you would teach a beginner when they're throwing and it still does work. The next reason you might be struggling with that uppercut is you have too much of a pause in the time between your punches, your initial punches, which are the setups, and then that uppercut. So I might do all the work. I step in one, two, three, four, and then I'm like, I'm gonna throw my uppercut. Then I take a little beat, a little pause just to assess because again, like I said before, you might be a little bit more scared with the uppercut because there are more holes and you're a little bit more open. But a lot of times for me, I find I land the uppercut when it's directly after some other punches. Instead of going one, two, three, pause, four, it's just one, two, three, four, and I just let it rip in there. And that's when you end up catching people. And recognize, of course, that you are compromised in this position a little bit more than a straight punch, so you've got to get your hand back a little bit faster. Avoid too much of a pause and not protecting yourself immediately after. And the last point I want to mention, and why you might not be landing your uppercuts as much as you want, is you're only thinking about it offensively. The uppercut is a great defensive move. I'm going to give you two quick examples of how you might utilize this as a defensive punch both of which are gonna be off the back arm, the rear uppercut. Now, again, we're not worried about the perfect technique. Like we're gonna drop and execute in an awesome fashion. If you throw a jab at me and I slip to the side, I might let this hand drop. So now from here, there's a little bit more preload and then I can just lift out and snap it up. I slip punches encounter with the uppercut. I make sure I leave my forehead exposed. Maybe I let somebody touch it once. They jab me, touches me. And then next time I slip and I throw it right away. I don't want to go one, pause, two. I want to go one, two, slip, one, two. The uppercut defensively in that way is very good. In addition, if somebody throws a straight punch, you can step backwards as they throw and let your own uppercut go as long as it's long. If it's a long upper cut, that'll work very nice. So just step and throw back, step and throw back. Both of those are going to be very, very beneficial for you to start landing that uppercut in perhaps a different way than you've ever thought of it. It's a short punch. So maybe you're going, I have to throw it at the end of my offensive punch combo. But no, remember, defensively, this shot is very dangerous as well. For the uppercut, why you might be, not be landing it. That is everything I want to run by you today. And I hope, I truly hope this helps many people out there improve this awesome punch. Because if you limit yourself to just this and this, you're not as dangerous as you could be. Think of all the big uppercuts that people have been knocked down with throughout the years. It is a darn scary punch. Not just from MMA fighters, the guys like Francis Nagano when he knocked out over him, not just those guys, but also boxers. 
so mean. Such a fantastic punch. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, please give it a like. If you haven't already, join the channel and get subscribed. Train hard. I will see you back here soon for another episode.